Interviews. As juniors and seniors in college, with summer and graduation closely approaching, getting ready to apply to jobs and having interviews are inevitable. For most, interviews are the worst part of applying for jobs and many don't know the proper etiquette. The first step when applying for any type of job or internship is cleaning up your social media profile. Granted, they're still your accounts and many argue you should be allowed to post anything you want as long as it does not directly affect the company. But it's in your best interest to take the photos down of underage binge drinking, a status detailing a bank robbery, or you talking to your followers about stealing a cop car. The usual stuff we mostly talk about on social media outlets. Once your Twitter and Facebook are presentable, start researching companies and positions that you'd like to apply for. To help your resume and cover letter stand out amongst the others, you should tailor them to each individual company. For example, show that you know the work they do and reference key words from the job opening. If the job posting says they want a creative, ambitious, and hardworking applicant, then make sure you reference why you exude all those traits in your cover letter. When trying to get your application to stand out, don't be afraid to be creative. Color coordinate your resume and cover letter to the colors of the business. It not only shows you did your research, but also helps your resume stand out amongst the others. When applying for a cult internship, I put my cover letter, resume, and references into a Wheaties box. Another time, I applied to the Indianapolis Indians and made a baseball card with my contact information on it. Creativity only helps you stand out amongst the other applicants, so don't be afraid to think outside the box. After you send in your application, send a quick email or phone call double-checking they've received the necessary documents and ask if they need anything else. Be 100% sure that they don't specify that applicants should not call or email because you want to abide by their wishes. Wait patiently for a phone call asking you for an interview. You don't want to bother them after you've already called once. When you do get an interview, make sure you research the company so if they ask you any questions, you can show that you know the company and didn't just apply because you needed the job. There are certain rules men and women should follow when dressing for an interview. For women, you should wear little makeup and jewelry so you don't distract the interviewer. Wear closed-up shoes, either a pant or skirt suit, and have very little cleavage. Men should wear clean dress shoes, matching socks, a suit, and be clean-shaven. You want the interviewer to remember what you said, not how you looked. Arrive to the company 10 to 15 minutes early, but no earlier so you don't disrupt the interviewer's day. Once you get in, make sure you shake hands firmly before having a seat and have multiple resumes, and make plenty of eye contact. Be sure you listen carefully to all questions asked by the interviewer and answer each question fully. Don't be afraid to ask for clarification before answering. At the end of the interview, be sure to have a question prepared, such as when will you be making your decision. To ensure the interviewer continues to remember you after you leave the office, have a leave behind ready, such as a creative business card or your portfolio on a CD. After thanking the interviewer one last time before leaving, be sure to thank anyone else in the office who helped you that day, such as the receptionist who answered any questions or got you a glass of water. When you get home, write a sincere, personalized thank you card or email thanking them for their time and consideration and wait for a phone call offering the position because you just had an outstanding interview.